Welcome back to Book Break. In this video, I'm going to recommend a bunch of crime books. I've got a range of subgenres from really thrilling crime to cozy crime to historical crime, but what all of these books have in common is they are crime books written by women. And we know from looking at some of the biggest crime legends from Agatha Christie up to Anne Cleves, women write really, really good crime. And so I'm going to recommend some excellent books that you might not have read yet. And while I'm on the topic of crime legends, I've got two classic crime novels here that we've just published these lovely new editions of, The Daughter of Time and The Franchise Affair by Josephine Tay. Now, The Daughter of Time was actually voted the top crime novel of all time. That was by the UK Crime Writers Association. These are two classic crime novels that I haven't even read yet, but I feel very confident recommending them to you when they come with such high praise from the Crime Writers Association. So, The Daughter of Time is about Inspector Alan Grant. He's going to appear in this one as well. And while he is laid up in hospital with a back injury, he starts looking at old portraits. So this is a kind of crossover into historical crime. He starts looking at portraits, including one of Richard III, and decides that he doesn't quite buy the theories that have been passed down through history. So he gets swept up in this kind of historical crime conspiracy. In The Franchise Affair, Alan Grant is at it again, this time investigating a contemporary case about a teenager who claims to have been kidnapped and held hostage by these two seemingly quiet, sensible women in the community. So he's got to figure out what really went on behind the doors of their country home where they live, which is called The Franchise. The book is The Franchise Affair. So two classic crime novels to get started with. Fiona Cummins is a modern crime legend and she writes really, really dark crime. So this is one if you're ready to feel a little bit scared. All of Us Are Broken is her latest book. It features her recurring character Saul Anguish, who is a detective with a dark side. And in this book, he is investigating something pretty chilling, pretty terrifying. A couple, a young damaged couple called Missy and Fox who are hell-bent on infamy and have basically set off on this serial killing spree. Their path is going to cross with that of a mother taking her children on a family holiday. And so by the time Saul Anguish gets to the scene, he is going to be faced with something unspeakably terrifying. I really like Saul Anguish as a detective character. He's really fun to read about because he has got a dark, dark past of his own. And so he's always got a lot of demons to battle with of his own in every book. Dirt Town by Hayley Scrivener is an Australian crime novel. This one is set in a small town, a small dying town. So it's a great crossover of very, very popular crime subgenres. Aussie crime, also known as Outback Noir, crossed over with small town crime. In this one, a girl goes missing on her way home from school and so all of the deep hidden secrets of the community are going to have to be brought to the surface in order to figure out what happened to Esther. And while we're talking about Aussie crime, the queen of Aussie crime is Jane Harper, of course. And so her latest book, Exiles, is the third book in the Aaron Fork series. I actually don't have a copy to show you. And I have a feeling this happened last time I tried to tell you about this book as well. It is impossible to find a hard copy of that book in this office because it is so popular. I think that all the copies are just getting snaffled up. So once again, I'm failing to actually show you a copy, but this is what it looks like. Once again, in this book, Aaron Fork has to dig into the secrets that lie at the heart of a community. In this case, it is a woman who has gone missing a year earlier, abandoning her baby in a pram at a busy festival and then just vanishing into thin air. Another really popular crime writer who I also love is Dorothy Coonson. She writes brilliant crime thrillers, police procedurals. Her latest book is called My Other Husband and it is such a good premise. So this is about a mystery writer. She's in the process of a divorce and she suddenly finds herself being framed for murder. Someone is trying to frame her for crimes using the exact same kind of storylines that she writes about in her books. So if someone is hurting people the exact same way that she writes about in her books, obviously she is suddenly the prime suspect. She does have a really, really good alibi 
but she can't tell anyone about it because it would mean confessing her deepest held secret. And that synopsis actually reminds me of a slightly older book, The Trap by Melanie Rabe, which is also about a writer. This time the main character is a writer called Linda who 12 years ago her sister was murdered and she is convinced she knows who killed her. The only problem is she knows no one will believe her because the killer is quite a famous TV journalist and so Linda thinks of the only thing she can do. She writes a novel, a seemingly fictional novel, about a murderer who was never caught for their crime and then she agrees to grant just one media interview about the book and you can guess which journalist she grants that one interview to. Lynn Anderson is a beloved Scottish crime writer and Rona McLeod is one of her creations, a forensic scientist. So The Wild Coast is the latest in the Rona McLeod series and in this one someone is targeting wild campers and leaving these really sinister figurines made out of twigs at the scene of each crime. So it's really creepy. Also we have a whole other storyline going on inside this book which is actually taking a really close look at the police force and so a lot of the close colleagues that Rona works with are finding themselves being accused of misconduct and so the book also really looks at the things that are sometimes allowed to happen within the police force. So it's a crime book that will also make you think, but it's also super tense, super page turning because time is running out to save a woman's life. Another really great writer of police procedurals is Mary Hanna. I have got two books here. These are new editions from her DCI Kate Daniels series. So this one, The Murder Wall, is actually the first in the series. This is where we meet Kate Daniels, who is a very interesting character. We meet her as she is getting her second chance to prove herself in her role after failing to solve a really important case almost a year earlier. But this time round, Kate recognises the victim and fails to disclose it. She keeps her secret and so blurring her personal and professional life in a dangerous way. And then once you have fallen in love with Kate Daniels as a character, which you will, next up we have Settled Blood. And this series continues, they just keep coming. Moving into some historical crime, Other Women by Emma Flint is actually based on a true crime story. This is set between 1923 and 1924. We jump back and forth either side of a murder taking place and the story is told from the perspective of two women. One half of the story is narrated by a woman called Beatrice who is unmarried, living alone, working as a typist but her prospects for life are looking pretty limited but she's managed to kind of carve out some independence for herself in a world that not very kind to unmarried women. But then her whole world changes when she falls in love. The other half of the story is narrated by a woman called Kate who is married to the man Beatrice falls in love with. Emma Flint is such a good writer and I found this book really powerful. It made me really angry, it made me really upset and it was also a really interesting mystery. I spent a lot of time looking up the real story afterwards. The Maiden by Kate Foster is based on an even earlier true crime story. This one is about Lady Christian, who in October 1679 was arrested and charged with murdering her lover. And she was executed. And history never gave her the chance to tell her side of the story. She was just kind of branded by the media as an adulteress, a murderess, really kind of sensationalised. So in The Maiden, Kate Foster gives her a fictionalised version of her story but gives her a chance to have her voice heard. Moonlight and the Perler's Daughter by Lizzie Perk. This one kind of brings us full circle because this is historical crime and Australian crime. We're going back to that. This is set in 1896 and it's about a woman whose father goes missing at sea but she refuses to believe that he is dead and so she takes it upon herself to investigate the truth. Her father, by the way, is the captain of a pearl boat and so in her investigation she's going to reveal a lot of corruption and prejudice within the pearling business. I love this line, Eliza soon learns that the answers she seeks might cost more than pearls. 
For some cosy crime, you can't go wrong with the Dale's Detective series by Julia Chapman. The latest one in the series is Date with Evil. I believe this is number eight in the Dale's Detective series, so you've got a lot to choose from, a lot of fun to work your way through. These books are all set in a village in Yorkshire. They're really fast paced, really fun, really funny. In this one, the Dale Detective Agency, which have been dealing recently with a lot of cases from stolen washing to inheritance investigations, suddenly collide with something a lot more sinister. As they realise that evil is stalking the streets of Brooklyn. And for some more in the kind of cosy comedy crime genre, I really recommend this series by Tracy Whitwell, The Accidental Medium, followed by Gin Palace. So this is about as it says in the tin, a woman called Tans who accidentally becomes a medium. She starts working in a new age shop and soon discovers that the voices in her head are not just her imagination, but are in fact the voices of the dead speaking to her. So Tans becomes a slightly unwilling crime solver with the help of the dead. These books are set in Newcastle, they are spooky and hilarious and just really fun. So let me know in the comments below your favourite crime books written by women. I will also link here to a playlist of all of the videos where I have recommended crime and thriller books. I do it a lot because I just love them, I can't help it, I love a good page turner. So do click through and browse those videos and I'll see you next time.